This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits In this video, we're gonna implement one last piece of functionality with our command pattern, which is being able to export a command log. This is useful if you want to say store a bunch of commands that can be used for things like building a level or to actually save your player's progress or to be able to kind of um, encapsulate the commands that a player did in a multiplayer session that can be then passed on to another player um, so that it can be run on their machine and sort of so they can, both players can see the same actions happening. So in order to do this, we're going to actually store this right now in just a text file. So that's human readable, potentially even human editable if you wanted to have a way to, you know, say set up levels that doesn't require someone to dive into Unity. And what we can do um, in order to do this, we need to be able to take our commands and um, convert them into a, you know, human readable string format. And we're gonna do that by overriding the two string method that is sort of inherent in any object in C Sharp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the place cube command and in here, I'm going to create another method, and this is going to be a public override. And when you hit override like this, you'll notice that Visual Studio will kind of automatically suggest the things that can be overridden. The three are equals, get hash code, and two string. We're just going to work with two string right now. So I'm going to double click that, and this kind of automatically populates. Note that it's returning a string, um, and then it's just called two string with no parameters. Now I don't want to return the base to string, which would return probably just like the name of the class. Instead, what I want to do is I want to actually inform this based on the details that we have up here. So I want the string to be unique based on the position and color in the command. So what I'll do here is I'm going to say return, and I'm going to create a new string by concatenating a few pieces of information. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say this is a place cube command, so I want to note that. I want to say place cube, and then I'm going to add in a tab. This is a special character. When you do this um, slash here and then certain letters, that'll give it a special kind of thing. So in this case, slash T means tab, essentially hitting the tab button on your, on your keyboard. So I want this to be kind of tab separated there. Then I'm going to say plus position.x plus a colon plus position.y, plus a colon, plus position.z. And so that's simply um, the name and the position and the color are going to be tab separated, and then the individual values are going to be uh, colon separated in this particular format. You can use whatever format you would like, just be consistent with how you do it. Then I'm going to add another tab, so I'll do slash t. And then same idea, but for the color, I'll do color.r plus a colon, color.g plus a colon, and finally color.b. And that is all we need in here. Oops. Make sure you have pluses between all of them. So with that in place now, I can publicly get this string value, which then I can use to populate a text file. Text file itself I'm going to handle in the invoker because the invoker is responsible right now for holding the command history. I'm going to simply execute this inside of here as well. This um, invoker is getting a little bit heavy with different things, but again, this is an example project. Obviously you should you know, use proper approaches of separation of concerns and things like that when you're building a full game project. But for right now we'll say static void export log. This is not going to take any parameters because it's going to strictly be using the command history that it's holding. And we're going to create a list of strings, which I'm going to call lines, equal to a new list of strings. And then we'll say for each I command C in our command history, what we'll do is we'll say lines.add c dot to string. So we're converting our command into that string format and then adding it to this list. And 
And then lastly, we're going to write all these to a file. And how we can do this, kind of the most quickly, is we'll say system.io.file.write all lines. And now we need to give it the path to where it should write, which we're going to say is application.datapath. And this is just going to bring us right to the root of our assets folder. Plus slash command log.txt. And so that's going to put the slash is going to put us actually inside the assets folder. And then we're going to name this file. If it doesn't exist, it'll be created for us. If it does exist, it'll be overwritten. And then we're going to, in addition to that, we have to pass in an array or some sort of enumerable of strings so we can pass in our lines list. And this will actually work fine inside of write all lines. It'll go through each line one by one and write them to the file. And I believe it will separate them with um, line breaks as well, which is nice for us. So with all that, now we just need a place, we need a way to call this. And so I'm going to go down here into our, this is our update method. And after checking for our um, undo and redo, at the very bottom here, I'm going to say if input.getKeyDown keycode.e for export, then we'll simply call export log. With those in place, fairly simple and straightforward, but now what we can do is we can go back to Unity, and if I hit play, I can add half a dozen or so commands. We see that our command history down here, length is eight. If I hit the E key, don't see anything explicitly happen, but if I stop playing now and I go back to Unity here and I refresh my assets folder, we see that command log appears. And sure enough here we can see that we have a place cube with each of the positions and the colors of the cubes that we created. You can also open this up and it'll open either in um, Visual Studio or whatever text editor of your choice. And you can see here as well we have the place cube command tab separated with the position value and the color value. And it's easy enough now that what we could do is we could bring this file back in, separate out all of the data from it, and be able to use this to recreate new place cube commands in this case, and with the proper information that they need. So we can use this again for things like loading save states, loading new levels, or even um, multiplayer functionality. With that, that's going to wrap up the command pattern tutorials that I have for this. Um, be back soon with another topic. Until then, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. Consider becoming a Patreon backer to support more videos like this one. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.